Hello Grade 11s. Today we prove and apply the cosine rule. Let's start with how to prove the cosine rule. In triangle ABC, perpendicular height H is dropped from B to D. Line AC is divided into two parts, AD with the dimension of X and DC with the dimension of B minus X. Using Pythagoras' theorem, h squared is equal to c squared minus x squared for triangle ABD. For triangle BCD, h squared is equal to a squared minus b minus x all squared. Since h is common to both triangle ABD and BCD, we can say that c squared minus x squared is equal to a squared minus, in brackets, the square of b minus x. Expanding the brackets would give us c squared minus x squared is equal to a squared minus, open brackets, b squared minus 2bx plus x squared. Removing the brackets would give us c squared minus x squared is equal to a squared minus b squared plus 2bx minus x squared. If we add x squared to both sides, we get c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared plus 2bx. We want our answer in terms of a, b and c. Therefore, we should substitute for x. From triangle ABD, cos a is equal to x over c. Therefore, x is equal to c times cos a. The equation would be c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared plus 2bc times cos a. Let us make a squared the subject by adding b squared and subtracting 2bc cos a. This gives us a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. This equation is the cosine rule. We can use it to solve non-right angle triangles. The cosine rule applies when a given angle is between two given sides and we are required to calculate the third side. Let us join Bobby as he teaches his students about the cosine rule. As we are walking in today, you might have noticed three poles marked with flags. We want to create a large sand pit around these poles and put fencing poles all around it. So you need to get the exact measurements of the distances between the poles so that we know exactly how many fencing poles to use. Before we try to solve this problem, I have something I want to show you using the cardboard triangles you have in front of you. I've also given you a chart that holds all the formulae that we've used so far in trigonometry. You will see that some formula are useful in right angle triangles only, and some apply to any triangle. Have a look. First question. If you know the length of all the sides of that triangle, can you find the angles of the triangle? Well, we know the length of A here, B here, and C here. There's no right angle, so we can't use Pythagoras. And we can't use the trig ratios. Do you think we can use the area rule? Well, not really. We aren't looking for the area of the triangle, and we haven't been given the area either. So, what about the sine rule? Look at the formula. We have to have at least one angle to be able to use it. All we have are the sides. And we would need to draw an arrow from an angle to a side, and another arrow crossing it that also goes from an angle to a side. We can't use the sine rule if we don't know at least one of the angles. Um, I really don't think we can do this with what we've learned so far. You're quite right. If we had the two angles on one side, we could use the sine rule to find the one side here. And if we had two sides and one angle, we could use the sine rule to calculate the unknown angle. But we only know the length of all the sides of the triangle. And we haven't found a way to find the size of the angles of the triangle from that yet. Now for the second question. Now have a look at that triangle. If you know the two sides and an included angle, can you calculate the third side? Okay. Let's say we know A and B then we would know this angle in between them. That's angle C. Now let's check to see if the sine rule can work. 
Okay, let's see if we can make a cross from the information we have and the side we want to find. We have the angle at C and we want to find side C, so we can put in this arrow. The other arrow would have to go from angle A to side A. That doesn't work because we don't know A. Let's try from angle B to side B. That also doesn't work. But this one doesn't work with the sign rule either. You're quite right, Rifile. In fact, none of the rules that we've used so far in trigonometry will work here. But there is another rule that we can use, and it's called the cosine rule. The cosine rule says that a squared equals to b squared plus c squared minus 2 times b times c times cos of a. At first it looks complicated, but you'll soon see that there is a pattern to it. Remember that side A is opposite angle A, side B is opposite angle B, and side C is opposite angle C. Now it's time for your next challenge. Remember this rule will help you. Okay guys, here we go. I've labeled the poles A, B and C. We know that the distance between A and C is 7,5 meters. The distance between A and B is 6,2 meters. We also know that the angle at A formed when we draw AB and AC is equal to 74,6 degrees. What you have to find is the distance between B and C. So, where do you reckon we should start with this? Let's draw a triangle and fill in all the information that we know about the triangle. That's a good idea. Okay, so here's the triangle A, B and C. A, C is 7,5. A, B is 6,2. And the angle here at A is 74,6. And let's put a question mark here on B, C, because that's what we're looking for. Gee, now it doesn't look so difficult. Right. Also, let's put in A, B, and C on the sides as well. I reckon our new rule will work. Look, we know these two sides and the angle here between them, the included angle. We must find the third side. The cosine rule says that A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2 times B times C times cos A. Now, let's see what values we can put into that equation. A squared, that's what we're looking for. How about b squared? That will be 7,5 squared, and c squared will be 6,2 squared. Great! Then minus 2 times 7,5 times 6,2 times cos a. And the angle a is 74,6. Now all we need to do is work it out, but I'm not sure which keys to use on my calculator. Well, neither do I. When do we put in the cause? It looks difficult, but you just have to work carefully. Let me help you. 7,5 squared plus 6,2 squared minus 2 times 7,5 times 6,2 times the number first. 74,6 then cos of that number equals the calculator says that A is 69,993. That's nearly 70 meters. But look at the distance between poles B and C. It looks a lot less than that. I think something's wrong. What you're thinking is right. Your common sense tells you that the distance is not nearly as much as 70 meters. You have made the one simple mistake many people make. The formula says A squared equals, but we want just A. So what do you think we should do? Of course! We should have got the square root of the answer. That'll give us an answer for a, not a squared. So if I take the square root on my calculator, I get 8,3661 meters. And I guess we can round that off to 8,37 meters. Of course. We usually round off our calculations to two decimal places. After all those calculations, we now know that we need 8,37 meters for the fencing poles on the one side of the sand pit. The other sides were 7,5 meters and 6,2 meters. So all in all, we need about 22,07 meters. Okay, everybody. That actually wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be. I agree. You see, the secret is to take it one step at a time. Okay, here's our next challenge. 
you'll find the diagram in front of you. If the sizes of the lengths of the triangle are equal to 5 meters, 6 meters, and 10 meters, can you find the size of the largest angle of the triangle? Well, at least we have a diagram for this one. We're looking for the largest angle, so that will be opposite the longest side. That's 10 meters, so we're looking for angle W. This time we know the three sides and we have to find the missing angle. We haven't done this before. I hope the cosine rule will work for this. We only know this rule using A, B and C. So I guess we'll have to rewrite it using W, X and Y. This is really important. You must be able to adapt the rule to the triangle you are using. Can you guys see how to do that? Well, we want angle W. So let's change the A to a W all the way. Then B can be X and C can be Y. So we get W squared equals X squared plus Y squared minus 2XY cos W. Well done, Jared. Now you know all the sides. So you know W, X, and Y in the formula. But we want to find angle W. And that's on the other side of the formula. Do we need to get W on its own first? Again, an excellent question. You could change the subject of the formula to get cos of W on its own. But you can still work with the formula as it is. We'll first put in all the values and then we'll see what to do. Suits me. So W is 10, X is 6, and Y is 5. Let's see. That's 100 equals 36 plus 25 minus um, 60. And we leave cos W as it is. So 100 equals 61 minus 60 cos W. Can I subtract 61 minus 60 now? Let's take a look at that together. Can we say 61 minus 60? I don't think so. 60 is times by cos W. So we would have to work that out before subtracting. What about subtracting 61 from both sides? Right. We need to get cos W on its own on one side. So we need to get 61 onto the other side on its own first. Then we can decide about 60. Now we've got 39 equals to negative 60 cos W. That doesn't look right. That's okay. To get cos W on its own, we can divide by negative 60 on both sides. That's 0, 0,65 equals cos W. Watch out, you've fallen into another trap that many people fall into. Keep your negative. Right. So negative 0, 0,65 equals cos W. But how do we work out a negative angle? Remember, cosine is negative for obtuse angles. Have a look at angle W. It's obtuse, so we can expect a negative value. Fortunately, your calculator will deal with this anyway. Try it. Okay. So if we have cos of angle W, and we want W, we must use the inverse cos key on the calculator. So I put in 0, 0,65, then make it negative with this key then the inverse key, and then cos. Round it off to two decimal places. The answer I get is about 130,54 degrees. And that's an obtuse angle, just as you said. These calculations have to be practiced, so you need to get more examples from a textbook or from your teacher. Now there's something else I want to show you. We've used the cosine rule on two triangles. Just trust in that it will work on any triangle. But a good mathematician would check that with a proof. Just as we did with the other rules, we will construct a proof using what we know about right angle triangles. Let's take triangle PQR to represent any triangle. We will try to show that in triangle PQR, P squared is equal to Q squared plus R squared minus 2QR cos P. We will start by splitting the triangle into two right angle triangles. We will draw a line from R perpendicular to PQ at point S. The right angle triangles allow us to use Pythagoras. In triangle RQS, P is the hypotenuse. So, P squared equals to RS squared plus SQ squared. Now have a look at SQ. Do you see that it is part of line R? We can say that SQ is R minus PS. Now we can substitute R minus PS into our equation. 
Now use your algebra to multiply out of this bracket. We get r squared minus 2 times r times ps plus ps squared. This is useful to us because the ps squared and the r squared can be used for the Pythagoras theorem. Look at the diagram. In triangle PSR, choose the hypotenuse. So PS squared plus R squared equals Q squared. If you replace R S squared plus PS squared with Q squared in our equation, we get P squared equals Q squared plus R squared minus 2R times PS. Are we closer to proving what we want to prove here? Yes, because PS is the only part of this equation that still needs to change and we still need to get cos P and Q. Now watch carefully. Look at triangle PRS and use the trig ratios for cos. Cos B equals adjacent divided by hypotenuse, so that means PS divided by Q. We want PS on its own, so we multiply through by Q. So that means that PS must equal Q times cos P. Now we're nearly there. So take the equation for PS and substitute it into the previous equation. We will replace PS with Q cos P, and that will give us the cosine rule. That was a comprehensive explanation of the cosine rule. The questions that were done are all examples of typical questions in this section. Thank you for joining us, Good Elevens. Why don't you try the questions in the task video for more practice? You'll also be able to learn more about trigonometry on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. It's like the wild west in here. With all those diagrams, you gotta be quick on the draw and a fast trigger.